How's it going folks? Welcome to another discussion video. If you like this video, be sure to leave a like, share it, and subscribe. Our focus today is the nation of Cambodia. Now let's get into it. The killing fields, the Khmer Rouge, landmines, and famine. For many, the nation of Cambodia, despite its rich history and proud people, is sadly defined by the Cambodian genocide of the 1970s. However, as we shall see, the story of Cambodia is so much larger than their darkest moment. The nation of Cambodia is home to the Khmer people, who have long inhabited the lands of Cambodia, most famously building the ancient city of Angkor long ago. However, in the 1800s, Cambodia's power declined, and this eventually led to Cambodia, alongside Vietnam and Laos, being assimilated into the colony of French Indochina in the 1880s. After many decades of oppressive French colonial rule, in the 1940s change came to Cambodia. The first Khmer independence movement was formed, called the Khmer Isarak. Concurrent to the growth of the Cambodian independence movement was the outbreak of the Second World War, which saw the Empire of Japan invade Cambodia on March 9, 1945. Cambodia's young king, Nordam Sihanouk, declared independence from France at the urging of Japan on March 13, 1945. Son Napthan, a major figure within the Khmer Isarak, became prime minister. However, this independent government was not to last. After the end of the war, France returned to re-establish control in their Indo-Chinese colonies. France dissolved the independent Cambodian government and Cambodian Prime Minister Son Nap Thanh was imprisoned by the French. Although France reconquered Indochina, the Khmer people were determined to free themselves from French colonial rule. The latter half of the 1940s was a chaotic time for Cambodia. As King Nordam Sihanouk entered independence negotiations with the French, many parts of the country became plagued by violence as various armed groups began to seize territory for themselves. Amidst this chaos, in 1951, Son Nap was released from French imprisonment and returned to Cambodia amidst much fanfare. However, soon after returning, Son Nap immediately came into conflict with the French once more, and 1952 saw Son Nap flee the Cambodian capital of Phnom Penh alongside his Khmer Isarak supporters. Finally, in 1953, France granted Cambodia total independence. King Nordam Sihanouk returned from his lobbying abroad to Phnom Penh as a hero to the Khmer people. However, this peace was not to last. After fleeing Phnom Penh, Son Nap Thanh reorganized the Khmer Isarak into the Khmer Saray, which was dedicated to fighting monarchism and communism within Cambodia. The Khmer Saray began an insurgency against King Nordam Sihanouk. Concurrent to the Khmer Saray insurgency was the beginning of the North Vietnamese incursions into Cambodia. The goal of these North Vietnamese incursions was to use Cambodia as a staging ground to launch attacks against South Vietnam. Because of the chaos and uncertainty of the Vietnam War at the time, King Nordam Sihanouk was very paranoid about his nation's future, and paranoid of the United States' presence in South Vietnam, believing that the Americans would eventually be forced out of Asia just like the French had been before them. Following this logic, Sihanouk increased Cambodia's ties to China and North Vietnam, believing that they would ultimately be victorious. Although Sihanouk preached Cambodian neutrality in public, he allowed North Vietnamese and Viet Cong forces to establish bases on Cambodian soil, and soon, Cambodia was swarming with North Vietnamese forces. These incursions soon became an all-out invasion, and began to destabilize Cambodia economically and politically. Eastern Cambodia became territory occupied by North Vietnam, and accordingly, in 1969, the United States of America and South Vietnam began to bomb the area. Interestingly, King Nordam Sihanouk himself permitted the United States to combat the Vietnamese in Cambodia. The U.S. bombing of North Vietnamese bases in Cambodia caused hundreds of thousands of civilian deaths and destroyed much of the countryside. As Cambodia fell into chaos, the Workers' Party of Kampuchea led by the Chinese-trained General Secretary Pol Pot, began to gain popularity due to their anti-American rhetoric. As Cambodia was overrun by North Vietnamese troops, anger against Sihanouk's decision to allow the North Vietnamese army free access to Cambodia flared, and sadly resulted in ethnic violence being committed against innocent Vietnamese living in Cambodia, as well as protests and riots against King Nordam Sihanouk. Amidst this crisis, Sihanouk decided to take a trip abroad in early 1970. 
In Sihanouk's absence, on March 12, 1970, Marshal Lon Nol of the Cambodian military took charge of the nation after the northern Vietnamese embassy was sacked by protesters. Lon Nol cancelled the trade agreements Sihanouk had with North Vietnam, closed Cambodia to North Vietnamese arms traders, and issued an ultimatum to North Vietnam demanding that all North Vietnamese soldiers in Viet Cong leave Cambodian soil in 72 hours or risk military confrontation. The North Vietnamese forces ignored Lon Nol's ultimatum, and soon a protest of 30,000 people began outside the Cambodian National Assembly, demanding action be taken against North Vietnam. When it became apparent that King Nordam Sihanouk would not stop the North Vietnamese from violating Cambodia's borders and North Vietnam would not stop their transgressions, Lon Nol, alongside his ally, Prince Sisawath Sirk Matak, began preparations for a coup. While Lon Nol was originally only trying to convince Sihanouk to end his relations with North Vietnam, Sisawath Sirk Matak convinced Lon Nol to overthrow Sihanouk's government entirely. On March 18, 1970, Lon Nol executed his coup. The army was deployed to secure Phnom Penh, and the National Assembly of Cambodia invoked Article 122 of the Cambodian Constitution, issuing a vote of no confidence in King Nordam Sihanouk. After the National Assembly voted to remove King Nordam Sihanouk from power, Marshal Lon Nol became Cambodia's head of state and assumed emergency powers. King Nordam Sihanouk was infuriated and vowed revenge against Lon Nol. Lon Nol himself, now the leader of Cambodia, proclaimed the creation of the Khmer Republic. The Kingdom of Cambodia had fallen in a bloodless coup. After the March 18th coup, Sihanouk, now in exile in China, called for the Khmer people to take up arms against Lon Nol's government. Immediately uprisings started in several provinces, where Lon Nol had to send in the army to quell them by force. After he was overthrown, Nordam Sihanouk realized that the Khmer Rouge hated Lon Nol just as much as he did, and allied himself with them. Sihanouk called for all of his supporters to join the Khmer Rouge to fight against Lon Nol, and the group's numbers ballooned in size as Sihanouk's supporters heeded his call. As the Khmer Rouge and North Vietnam seized more territory in Cambodia, U.S. carpet bombing intensified disrupting the harvest and causing a massive famine. Although Lon Nol had the support of the military, it was not enough to save the Khmer Republic, as its government was ineffectual and its army was outmanned and outgunned by the Khmer Rouge and North Vietnamese forces. The two other main figures in the government were Prince Sisawath Sirik Matak, who'd only helped Lon Nol because he desired to be king himself, and Lon Non, Lon Nol's sycophantic brother. Lon Nan's motivation was simply to stay in his brother's good graces and fired, banished, or silenced any person in the government he perceived to be an enemy of his brother, causing massive disruption within the government. Actual competent leaders, such as San Nap Than, were shut out of Lon Nol's government by Sisawath Sirk Matak and Lon Nan's antics. Adding to the Khmer Republic's problems, Lon Nol suffered a stroke in 1972 amidst great stress, which worsened his fragile health. Although he survived, he was greatly weakened afterward. He began to seek refuge in reading the stars and consulting mystics and monks, believing his faith might achieve what his army and government couldn't. Paralyzed by a mountain of issues, the Khmer Republic's government collapsed on the 17th of April, 1975. After five years of civil war, Pol Pot's Khmer Rouge took the capital city of Phnom Penh. Marshal Lon Nol fled to the United States. In exile, Lon Nol was consumed by regret for leaving Cambodia and suffered from severe depression. Lon Nol died in Fullerton, California in 1985. Almost all the members of his government were murdered by the Khmer Rouge. After their victory, the Khmer Rouge began a genocide in Cambodia emptying the cities and forcing the Khmer people to work in agricultural collectives in order to achieve true socialism. Lon Nol's soldiers were murdered. Artists, intellectuals, ethnic minorities, and political enemies were murdered. Anyone perceived to be an enemy was murdered. People with glasses were murdered. Innocent people were murdered for no reason at all. From their takeover in 1975 until their collapse in 1979, the Khmer Rouge killed one quarter of Cambodia's entire population. In 1979, Cambodia's nightmare was ended when the Khmer Rouge were toppled by Vietnam, ending the genocide. 
Cambodian society was devastated by the genocide, and the country is still riddled with landmines today, dating back to the Civil War. Never having fully recovered from Pol Pot's rule, Cambodia remains impoverished and under authoritarian rule to this day. Pol Pot himself was never brought to justice for his sick crimes and died in peace in 1998 without ever seeing a day in court. But what if things happened differently? What if the Khmer Republic survived and the Khmer Rouge never took power? What would a Cambodia without a genocide look like? Let's find out. Our point of divergence for this what if, much like the prior South Vietnam victory what if, is the 1960 South Vietnamese coup, which succeeds and stabilizes the country under authoritarian President Win Chon Thi, unlike in our timeline where it failed. Even with President Win Chon Thi's success, however, Nordam Sihanouk is still convinced that, because of its colonial roots, South Vietnam will not be able to survive in the long term. Following these beliefs, Sihanouk still allies with North Vietnam and allows Cambodia to be flooded with North Vietnamese troops as in our timeline. However, there is a major change in this timeline, because South Vietnam is stable and has secured the border with the North. Because the Cambodia-South Vietnam border is the only way to infiltrate South Vietnam, a bottleneck of North Vietnamese forces forms in Eastern Cambodia, which causes the situation in Cambodia to be even more dire than in our timeline. Cognizant of the rapidly deteriorating security situation, South Vietnam discusses the destabilization of Cambodia with the United States and manages to convince the U.S. that South Vietnam will be fully capable of offering military assistance to Cambodia if requested. President Nguyen Chon Thi further stresses that the optics of South Vietnam intervening in Cambodia are far better than the U.S. doing so. Confident in President Nguyen Chon Thi's abilities, the United States does not get involved in Cambodia and never begins its catastrophic bombing campaign. In March 1970, the situation reaches a dangerous tipping point, as even more of Cambodia had been occupied by North Vietnam than in our timeline. Marshal La Nol rallies Cambodia against the encroaching North Vietnamese threat during King Nordam Sihanouk's trip abroad, and overthrows Sihanouk before the North Vietnamese overrun all of Cambodia. Lon Nol's coup enjoys broader support in this timeline due to the fact that nearly half of the entire country has been occupied by North Vietnamese forces, and even many stalwart royalists are sympathetic to Lon Nol's actions. By Lon Nol's side during the plotting and execution of the March 18th coup are Prince Sisuath Sirk Matak and Lon Nan. However, in this alternate timeline, the March 18th coup is not as bloodless as it was in ours. King Nordam Sihanouk, even more paranoid than in our timeline due to the additional stress of more North Vietnamese troops overrunning the country, had created a small royal guard to defend him in case of a coup by North Vietnam or the United States. On March 18, 1970, King Nordam Sihanouk orders the small group of remaining royal guardsmen to launch a counter coup. In the ensuing chaos, Sihanouk's royal guard manages to assassinate both Sisawath Sirk Matak and Lan Nan although Lan Nol manages to survive and proclaim the foundation of the Khmer Republic. The two men who would run the Khmer Republic into the ground are dead on the day of its foundation. Lan Nol is inconsolable at the loss of his brother and his chief ally. The power vacuum, however, is quickly filled by more competent officials who will unknowingly be Lan Nol's salvation. Long Barret, an honest and capable man who in our timeline was the Khmer Republic's last Prime Minister, instead becomes Prime Minister under Lan Nol from the start instead. In Tom, leader of the National Assembly, retains the position in this timeline, unlike in ours where Lan Nol and he had a massive falling out due to the instability caused by Sisawa Sirk Matak and Lan Nan. However, while Long Barret and In Tom are extremely useful to Lan Nol, his greatest ally is Son Nop Than, the legendary Khmer freedom fighter. In this timeline, without Lan Nan and Siswath Sirk Matak's endless chaos disrupting the government and blocking him from participating in it, Son Nop Than takes charge as Lan Nol's closest ally and his vice president. Lan Nol himself, able to expend less energy single-handedly running the country, does not have a stroke in 1972, as his health, while fragile, is not worsened by the stress of political instability. In Tom, Long Boret, and Son Nop Than form a triumvirate under Lan Nol. Just as in our timeline, the Khmer Rouge and Sihanouk join forces and become a formidable united front against Lan Nol. 
However, Marshal Lon Nol is much better equipped to handle them in this timeline. With his mind off governing, Lon Nol simply serves as the head of state and military leader of the Khmer Republic, inspiring his people to defend the young nation and coordinating military matters while his triumvirate runs the government. Son Nup Thanh emerges as a propaganda symbol signifying resistance to imperialism, communism, and monarchism, often appearing with Lon Nol in propaganda posters. Furthermore, his elite veteran Khmer Saray forces are integrated into the Khmer Armed Forces, with Son Nup Thanh's commanders leading Lon Nol's soldiers into battle against the Khmer Rouge. In Tom ensures the National Assembly is compliant with the Triumvirate's wishes, gaining favor with Lon Nol as a result. Prime Minister Long Barret works as best as he can to root out corruption in the Young Republic and alleviate the suffering of the Khmer people. Long Barret also negotiates financial, arms, and food aid deals with the U.S. Furthermore, Long Barret acts as a liaison between Saigon and Phnom Penh. Together, the triumvirate of Son Nap Than, In Tom, and Long Barret manage to build a much more stable and less corrupt government for the Khmer Republic. Lon Nol's army, led by elite Khmer Saray veterans, is much more successful against the Khmer Rouge. The absence of a U.S. bombing campaign ensures that year's crop yield remains undamaged. Furthermore, with strong leadership, less severe corruption, and high morale, the Khmer Republic's military manages to eke out several victories against the Khmer Rouge throughout the summer of 1970. Although untrained and untested at the start of the war, the Republic's military has evolved into a seasoned fighting force under the leadership of the Khmer Saray, now classified as an elite unit with authority over the Khmer Republican Army, Navy, and Air Force. However, as the Khmer military grows stronger, so too does Chinese and North Vietnamese support for the Khmer Rouge. By 1974, the war has largely devolved into a slog, as Chinese funding for Sihanouk and the Khmer Rouge intensifies. Seeking to end the war and his people's suffering, Lon Nol flies to Saigon to meet with South Vietnam's president, Win Chon Thi. Once in Saigon, Lon Nol requests a brief military intervention by South Vietnam in the Khmer Republic as part of a final push to destroy the Khmer Rouge. Win Chon Thi, seeing this as an opportunity to flex South Vietnam's military might and gain favor with the Khmer people, is easily convinced. Lon Nol and Win Chon Thi craft a mutual defense treaty between the Khmer Republic and Republic of Vietnam, and Win Chon Thi puts South Vietnam's armed forces on high alert. With the beginning of the dry season in December 1974, South Vietnam sends its forces across the border into the Khmer Republic, where they link up with the Khmer Republican armed forces. The combined might of the two professional militaries quickly manages to push back the Khmer Rouge and North Vietnamese forces, and the successful dry season offensive culminates in a daring strike on the Khmer Rouge by the South Vietnamese ARVN and Khmer Republican Army on April 17, 1975, which sees the Khmer South Vietnamese forces earn a decisive victory against the Khmer Rouge in the Battle of Ban Lung, in which General Secretary Pol Pot is captured alive, and the Khmer Rouge forces, suffering from poor morale and fighting a massive malaria outbreak, crumble under the onslaught of the South Vietnamese and Khmer forces. With the capture of Pol Pot and the collapse of the Khmer Rouge, April 17th marks the end of the dry season offensive and the end of the Cambodian Civil War. Without the Khmer Rouge, the North Vietnamese are forced to withdraw before the advancing ARVN and Khmer forces back into North Vietnam, as Nordam Sihanouk becomes doomed to live in exile for the rest of his life. Following the successful dry season offensive, South Vietnam withdraws its troops as Win Chon Thi visits Phnom Penh for a state visit. There, he and Lon Nol embrace and celebrate their victory over communism. Lon Nol proclaims the dawning of a new era for the Khmer people, and promises that once the situation in the Khmer Republic is fully stabilized, he will play the game of democracy. The end of 1975 is spent with Son Nap Thanh organizing military parades and celebrations. Long Barret resettling displaced refugees and organizing the landmine removal efforts across Cambodia, and In Tom preparing to call elections in the near future and working on amending the constitution with the National Assembly to fold the duties of the Prime Minister into the office of the President with a two-term limit, creating a truly presidential republic in Cambodia. Marshal Lon Nol throws a celebration rock concert in Phnom Penh, celebrating the republic's survival, a few days later, In Tom and the National Assembly bestow upon Lon Nol the title of Marshal of the Khmer. 
Following this, Lonnell embarks on an international tour, including meetings with American President Hubert Humphrey in Washington, D.C., and Vietnamese President Nguyen Chan Thi in Saigon. After a speedy trial, on January 5, 1976, Pol Pot is found guilty of high treason against the Khmer Republic. Pol Pot pleads his innocence, saying he only wanted what was best for the Khmer people, but his pleas fall on deaf ears, and that same day, Pol Pot is executed via hanging. In 1980, the Khmer Republic holds its first free and fair election, in which Long Barrett emerges victorious. After serving two four-year terms, President Long Barrett leaves office in 1988 in a peaceful transfer of power. In 1995, the hero of the Khmer Republic, Lan Nol, passes away at the age of 82 at his home in Phnom Penh, and the nation mourns for months afterwards, remembering the old marshal as a national hero who stood up for the Khmer people when no one else would. As the Khmer Republic enters the 21st century, it begins to look unrecognizable to today's Cambodia. There was no genocide. Pol Pot and the Khmer Rouge are an afterthought. Sihanouk is still in exile. There is laughter in the streets of Phnom Penh. The economy has long since recovered from the horrors of the Civil War, and today the Khmer Republic is by all accounts a prosperous middle power and a stable democracy, enjoying a strong and friendly partnership with the Republic of Vietnam. Every year, March 18th is a huge celebratory occasion and national holiday, and the year 2023 is no different. On March 18th, 2023, the streets of the Khmer Republic, and Phnom Penh in particular, are packed, as the whole nation celebrates the Republic's founding, with music and laughter across the land into the early hours of the morning. After many years of strife and hardship, the Khmer people and their great republic had at last found peace.